This is Apostle Dillon Bergen. I, I've been feeling so grateful and so humble these days, really grateful to God. And um, I want to just record my thoughts and my gratitude to the Lord and, you know, to share it. I hope that people are really blessed because this is a trip for me. This is a trip down memory lane with the Lord. And I've been talking to the Lord seriously, you know, out of a place of gratitude for where the Lord has brought me. And I call this um, reflection, uh, you had plans or God had plans. And I go all the way back from my childhood, even uh, actually to my conception. So when I was um, conceived, my mother was uh, a young woman, um, just out of her teen years, you know, just beginning the 20s. And she was the first child for my grandparents. And uh, my grandmother, no doubt, was terribly disappointed and upset. And for that reason, gave her a really hard time. So um, I really should not have been born. Uh, I mean, it was that difficult and that much pressure for my uh, mother, for this young woman who was pregnant with her first child. And was she was herself was the first child of the, the marriage. And obviously, in the, for those of you who know the Caribbean, that first child must lead the way and must also come to help the parents because, you know, they go to work early and all that sort of thing with eight other children behind. They must go to work early and uh, be able to help the family. So to get pregnant is now putting extra burden on the family. And so um, for a lot of reasons, I really should not have been born. Um, but the other day I spoke with my mother and I, we had that conversation and you know what she said to me? She said, you never, you know, I never even thought of abortion. I just wanted God to bring me through it. It was tough and it was, it was really difficult. It was painful mentally and emotionally because of what I went through. Um, but I never thought of, of, uh, not having the baby. You know why I'm saying this to you now? Because God had a plan. God had plans. God had plans. Uh, some neighbor said to them, oh, they, she had a dream and they must take me to the, to the sea to give me an early morning bath. The, the, the result of that was that it destroyed my, it, it hurt my eyes badly. It gave me a really bad cold in the head. So for years I struggled with, with you know, the, 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 cold, the cold in the head and the um, eyes always giving trouble for years and so forth. But um, God knew that one day, I'll be a writer and God knew I would need these eyes and God kept me and preserved me through all the ups and downs because God had a plan. God had plans. When I was uh, probably about nine or so or ten, um, I was playing with, with, with a neighbor and um, I kicked at her, you know, I mean, I, we were, I was a boy, she was a, we were playing, you know, and you, you know, you're hitting and you're, use, you're kicking your foot and so on. So I raised my foot and she just toppled, she just um, hit my foot up like that and I went backwards and fell on my hands and my left arm was actually fractured. I, they, I was taken to the doctor, um, to the main hospital, to the hospital in, 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 the, in the city and after examination, one of the younger doctors said they may need to remove the hand and the older doctor, God bless him, he had the wisdom to say, no, he's young, he will grow it out. And so they sling the hand up, they fix it, did whatever they had to do, and they sent me back home in great pain, as if I could remember so, remember it to some extent now, how painful it was. But you see, they could not remove that hand because God had plans. You know, later on, um, I, I passed uh, the common entrance exam to go to the, the top school in the country. My grandmother, you know, a struggling woman with whom I, I was raised and she had several other children. I was the first grand. And um, her uncle, my great uncle, said to her, well, you don't see that boy has speed, you know. You know, he was, he was fast track. He was, he had, what they didn't understand is that what I had was ambition. And that from a little child, God's hand was upon me. I wasn't given trouble. I wasn't rude or anything, but I just had some speed. I was always running, always on the move. Um, you send me upstairs for something, I go on running. You know, there was that drive, that tenacity and that vigor. And so he said, why are you sending this boy to, to school, to this, to grammar school? Why are you sending him to school in the city? 
you know this boy would get into bad company and the speed he has he would be led away and he would be um you're going to lose this child why are you going to send him into the city but she said i'm going to try because he passed for the top school in the country um i'll make the effort but what she didn't know is that it wasn't just her who was saying she's going to send me to the top school and she was going to get help the help of her other of her children um, who grew up like my older siblings that they were going to help her they, they said they would help you know two of them in particular who were, who had reasonably good jobs said they would help to pay my school fee and pay for me the trans uh the transportation for me to go to the school in the city and so on and so um what they didn't understand is that they were simply reacting to the plan that god already had in the heavens because in the spirit realm god knew that i had to go that route i had to meet the boys i met at the top school in the country i had to be in that environment i was the first child from the family getting an opportunity to go to um high school to and to go to uh, of all things the top school in the country but that was possible and that happened because god had plans god had plans um i um you know was a, a a good student and a, a model student in behavior and attitude and and so forth in fact um i got the award for when i graduated my class graduated i got the award for the student of commendable school spirit because that i was a prefect i was a monitor i was the vice captain of my schoolhouse i was i was really that student that was a good student although um i struggled in some of my subject areas now i'll tell you why not because i didn't have the ability but because i worked so hard as a young man that i would be i had to be up early in the morning to get um tie the sheep out to graze i had several sheep and then the cat the the, the uh the um i had rabbits and uh, pigs and chickens and so on you had to take care of of all those farming things and then get ready go to school in the, um in the morning to get there on time and then in the evening I had to rush home from school to go to the lands so because I was I mean my I was a young man young and strong and knew what to do so I had to go home to go to the lands to plow up the lands and dig up the lands so that um my grandmother could be able to um plant and the the, the man she had working for her one of her workers um she had you know usually she may have somebody to help you know he would be able to plow the lands because I would have prepared it the evening before that sort of thing or, or maybe sometimes she had load in the uh, some um produce in the land that i had to go and fetch in order to take it to one of the higglers or hucksters in the market the following day so it was always going of course on top of that i st i had to go and you know bring the sheep back in from grazing and feed the and the, the other animals and and the chickens and so on um in the evening as you know evening duty because you have to feed them at least twice a day so with all of that um i was obviously tired so instead of getting the homework completed and studying i would be trying to study or doing homework and be falling asleep you know but um i made it through and i pressed my way i graduated from high school and um that was possible because god had plans then it was time for for job and you know nothing was working out i uh, didn't have any grandfather to pull any strings as was the custom you know in the as is the custom in many of these islands you know you have to have someone who knows someone to get you in that didn't happen but uh by the grace of god i was hired by the church in which i um, to which i belonged at the time the, the, the denomination uh and they sent me in an area to work with a church to revive the church so they gave me a stipend pay the utilities and so forth and i started really building my life from there you know having moved away finally um moved away from my farm because i i i actually went into farming fully um in in those couple of years between ending high school and getting that opportunity I decided I'm going to go full force into farming. I liked it anyway, but you know I I I came to like it, but besides that um you know it is not the same as getting a reliable uh um uh, a check you could rely on every month. You get the point I'm making. But coming out of that experience of going to revive the church, I met some people, you know, good people, not just not not, not just at that church, but you know in in the wider denomination 
folks who could open doors for you, help you to do some things, give you some opportunities, um, see where you're going and so into your life and so forth. And, and that led, um, opened up the, the, the door for, for me to answer the call that God had placed on my life since I was about 10 years old, which was to go into full-time ministry, to become a pastor, you know, to join the ranks of clergy. And so I see all of that lining up. And I, and as I look back and see how it, how it lined up, you know, just, just, I mean, it just lined up perfectly like, like you were building a building and you laid a foundation and you were just going up in stages because God had plans. I went to seminary totally disappointed when I got there because I saw and heard things that I thought, um, did not line up with the word of God and, and, um, were not consistent with what with, with what the scriptures um uh, uh uh demands in terms of morality and um and and integrity and uh graciousness and you know the fruit of the spirit the, the, the qualities of a believer's life and so i undertook not deliberately or not planning to but just my nature i on i i just ended up in a battle um, struggling and, and, and uh, fighting, challenging the system so that it could change for the good because I saw the potential of what the institution could do for the general body of Christ. Now I know this on hindsight. Now I really understand that God had plans. But I un understand on hindsight that God was really uh, working through me so it wasn't even me it was that God gave me this understanding and this vision as a young man in my in my early 20s God gave me this understanding and this vision that you are looking at something that has the great potential to impact the world but it was being squandered and it was being locked down and it was like a sleeping giant and so I was fighting this I fought this for four years of of, of, of seminary life and and um and undergraduate work but in all of it even I, I felt like leaving but because of the challenge I had even getting in I understood that I had an obligation to stay because as if God fought the battle for me to get in and I could not disappoint God and so I saw the hand of God and I saw the plan of God unfolding so I understood God had plans no when I went to seminary, I went with a wife. You know, I was already married when I went to seminary. But that, there's a story behind that too. Um, I should have gone to study, to, to school, uh, aviation school, to become a pilot. Everything, I got accepted. I um, had dates set and so forth. At the last minute, the funding source um, uh, didn't work out. And so plans had to be cancelled. But I ended up going to a retreat for, for prospective candidates for the ministry where I met the person who would become my wife. Now, had I gone to study aviation, I would, um, I would not have met her uh, and, and so I would not have had a wife. But I've been praying six years before I met her that God would, 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 would lead me to the person. God would identify that person. God would choose that person for me so that I can marry the person uh, of his choice and of his will who would be a real helper to me and a, and a builder with me in ministry. I found her because God had plans. And even after we got married and finished seminary and so forth, it was time to start our expanding our family. We could not have children. The doctors couldn't figure out why. Nobody could say why. Um, and they couldn't treat us for anything because they said, there's nothing that we can identify so we can't treat what we cannot see or cannot identify. But when I came to the United States of America, when, 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 when I moved to um, New York and then short, um, a few months after that, I, I, I had my wife to come and join me. Not long after she arrived, she got uh, pregnant. And then I understood as the years went by, 
and I watched these two beautiful boys growing up and I saw the talents, the abilities and I saw how uh, a big context like New York as opposed to a small, much smaller context like my um, own, home, own home country or any island of the Caribbean or the Caribbean as a whole, you know, much smaller culturally and, and in, in, in scope and possibilities than say the United States of America. I understood that what God had deposited in me deposited in me even before he put me in the matrix of my mother's womb that that some of those things could not be properly understood nurtured and manifested on unless i had been moved to a larger context and in that larger context i could have the, uh, released the seeds of, 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 of possibility and potential that God had put in my loins so that what he had deposited in me can be continued in the way that Abraham's work could have continued to Isaac, Jacob, uh, Joseph and their descendants because when God has a plan, you are only a part of it. And I saw, so I recognized God had plans. Then it, there, it, it, there came time for me to shift from the denomination that I grew up in. I grew up in a mainline denomination, was faithful to it all my years, worked very hard in it. Wherever I was placed, I worked with just as much enthusiasm and zeal and the fire of God within me. But there came a point at which I recognized that uh, my the, the, the calling upon my life and the vision God gave me and the direction the denomination was going and the struggles and pressures that um and the glass ceiling that one had to try and fight through that those would would do nothing greater than frustrating the plans of god and and causing such uh, frustration and, and and lockdown of the potential i had and at some point i felt the powerful move of god saying to me now it is time go I moved out, started a church, an independent church, and um, didn't grow as fast and as wild and great as I, I as I anticipated. You know, started off well and stayed stable and struggled for a while. You know, stayed at the same place, I should say, and you know, struggled for a while to really solidify and, and strengthen because it was new, it was fresh, it was pure. It wasn't a breakaway from any place. So you had to really build it. And so it took time, but uh, eventually it got to a place of stability and strength and, and, the, and the, the grace of God is evident in the ministry and God continues to work with, 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 with us in building and leading um, so that it could be all for, the, for his glory. And I, I, I pause at moments and just look at what God is doing and listen to what God is saying and how God is directing me and I I am totally, utterly convinced that all of it has been happening in a particular way and even in, in, at times when I felt that the growth was far too slow for the amount of time, energy, work, prayer, structure that I put into the ministry, I realized that even in those in those in in that movement and that apparent slow movement that it is all part of God's plans. And I want to tell somebody today whatever you are going through wherever you are whatever the stage and state of your life right now if you are convinced or if somewhere deep within you you could find an, uh, that, 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 that place within you where you can just visit yourself and see yourself as God sees you and ask God for a vision and a revelation and you could understand that God has plans for you. If you can hear, get to the place where you can truly hear the voice of God. And especially if you're saved, if you love the Lord, and if you've been, you know, serving in the church of God and so on. But you can get to the place where you recognize that it is all about the Holy Spirit of God. It is not just about um, religion. It is not just about forms and traditions. It is not just about uh, um doing what you think or feel is is expedient and so on but if you really learn to listen to the holy spirit listen to god as he talks to you in your heart listen to god in prayer talk to god and then wait to hear what god has to say think about the things of god the things that are lovely pure good just 
honest of good report and hear god respond to you and talk back to you 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 will be encouraged because you will see clearly deep within your heart god has plans and if you can recognize that god has plans for you he'll do a great work in your life and he'll you'll see god transforming you into what he wants you to be and god marshalling things into place for your good because ultimately it's for his glory and whatever is for his glory if we do it then it brings us joy and happiness and peace it works out for our good god bless you god bless you god bless you and god strengthen you anoint you and stir you up that you may do his will and do what pleases him in the mighty name of jesus i'm apostle dylan bergen uh, you can visit me on my website at pastorbergin.com. Bergin is spelled B-U-R-G-I-N, pastorbergin.com. And I have a, a, an online school called Logos Education Institute dot teachable dot com. Logos Education Institute dot teachable dot com. Awesome school, some great courses, and I have a free evangelism course there. Log on. Um, do the course, connect with me, reach out. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, um, and so forth. Um, using Either using my name, Dylan Bergen, or Pastor Bergen, or Apostle Bergen, or Life Coach Bergen. Something in that of those would connect you with me in those plat on those platforms. Let us build something great for the glory of God. Let us connect and do a great work for God. And um, you will be blessed, and God will be pleased. Amen.